Personally, I don't think you should buy eggnog from a store. I think you should make eggnog. It's easy. I'm going to show you how to make a very easy, super delicious eggnog, but I know that you're going to buy some store-bought eggnog anyway this holiday season. Ho, ho, ho. And so I thought, would it be useful to you if I showed you which ones were good and which ones were bad? I bought a bunch of store-bought eggnogs today to taste test for you so you don't have to. Today on HTD, Greg drinks all the gloop so that you can not. Let's do the show. <laughs> Everybody loves eggnog. That's probably not true. Most people don't love eggnog, but you should love eggnog. If you don't love eggnog, it's probably because you're only familiar with store-bought eggnogs. And growing up, I thought eggnog was a thing that came in a carton. I didn't know there was another kind of eggnog. And then I found out you can make your own eggnog. I first want to make eggnog the way that I make it. It's super easy. It is outrageously good. I love this stuff. I make it every year. And then, for comparison's sake, I will show you, we'll taste our way through all these eggnogs. It'll be kind of a cozy episode. This is like a real put your feet up by the fire episode. Oh, we can put some spice on it. So this is not eggnog tasting. This is an eggnog shootout. So this eggnog I'm about to make, some people have said to me in the past, hey, that's not eggnog. That's a flip. That's not a nog. Genuinely speaking, I don't know or understand the true technical differences of a nog and a flip. Maybe it has to do with beating the eggs separate or something and folding them together. All I know is that in the Jerry Thomas Bartender's Guide, this recipe is essentially, it's what he calls Boston eggnog. It's, a, it's eggnog. It's made in a shaker for a single serving. And David Wondrich backs that up. I have simply modified the recipe a little bit with some tweaks and improvements. And it also comes back from a time when eggnog was not yet really even a holiday recipe. You could just walk up to the bar in hot July and say, I'd like an eggnog to cool off, sir. And indeed, they would oblige. You're going to get your shaker. You're going to get a jigger. You're going to need to reorganize your bar because it's a disaster. Start with a half an ounce of simple syrup. And that's a two to one ratio simple syrup does not need to be refrigerated that way, which is why it's the best way to make your simple syrup. Then get a half an ounce of Luxardo Maraschino, which, trust me, it's very good in this. <laughs> it really makes this drink work. I used to throw cognac in here. I don't think the cognac is necessary. I think that if you like cognac and you want to do a little split base here, it's not a bad drink to do it in. Frankly, I mostly prefer mine to be with bourbon. Just go two ounces of bourbon. That's what I do. And I like a high proof bourbon. I'm going to use Baker's, the barrel proof bourbon I've got on hand. Next, we need one whole egg. We're not going to separate, not an egg white. We want the whole thing. One whole egg. zippity doo da. Boom. Egg. There it goes. Got an egg in there, so we're going to dry shake. We really want to break up that yolk. Now we're going to add some ice. Leave one cube whole. The other one I like to crack in a little pieces. Now we're going to shake the Dickens out of this. I don't know if Dickens liked egg nine. He certainly liked a uh, smoking bishop, which is a kind of holiday mulled wine that I made, and you can see the link in the pin comment below. Whew! I've done something in my arm there, unless I'm having a heart attack. I think I'm fine. There's no tingles. I don't see any spots. I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling fine. Grab yourself a glass, strain it in. I'm gonna top that up with a little milk, about three ounces. And uh, I prefer whole milk, but just use whatever you like. Gonna grate some nutmeg over it on your eggnog. And then I like to grate a little orange zest as well. I think this adds a huge thing to this drink. I've never used this grater for this, but you might want one that's a little bit finer, but that's okay. <laughs> and uh, there it is. That's how I make an eggnog. I call this my, I don't know, it's pretty standard improved Boston eggnog or something like that. Oh my God, that's good. It's creamy without being heavy. It's got some meat on its bones. A little like, it's good. It's got some body to it. The bourbon, is loud and proud. It has a lot of caramel and like oak char. It's so good. That's my favorite eggnog, I swear. Try that, I think you'll like it. The orange zest, it works very, very well with the bourbon, of course. You know that from an old fashioned, but also with the maraschino. It is nutty and sweet and creamy, yet not too heavy. It's not cloying, it's not overly sweet. It's not like drinking cake batter, okay? A lot of these eggnogs are really, really very thick. I don't want to take a nap now. This does not have that effect. It has been my suspicion for a really long time that these store-bought eggnogs are actually trying to approximate not eggnog, but rather something called Tom and Jerry. Now, Tom and Jerry is supposed to be pretty daggone thick stuff. It's like, I've heard it referred to as being like pancake batter. It is served hot as well. So if you've got this mental perception that eggnog should be served hot, you've probably crossed Tom and Jerry and eggnog together. 
let's move this thing right along and actually start tasting some eggnogs. Uh, I think it'll actually be more fun if we start this episode with the alcoholic ones. So right after this, I'm gonna start tasting some alcoholic eggnogs and then we'll move on to the non-alcoholic stuff. We'll be right back. Well, let's start with the Pennsylvania Dutch. No serving instructions on here. I think we lightly chilled this. Let's just pour it in a glass and give it a shot. I really don't like the smell of it. It smelt like sour milk, it had that odor, like a slightly like a vomity smell. Oh, you know what though? Honestly, now that it's out of the bottle, I'm not getting quite as nasty a stench on it. All right, whatever, let's just see if it's any good. I've had worse. It's very thick. I mean, mine is so much more drinkable than this. This is like drinking glue. I bet if you shook it and thinned it out with a little melt water, it'd probably be a lot better. I don't want to spend all night on this, but I'm fascinated by this question. Is this going to be, how much better is this if I shake it? Uh, I may not do this for all of them, but from our findings here, we could determine that you should always shake these store-bought eggnogs. Okay. I mean, this looks better already. All right, here's their Pennsylvania Dutch shaken. This is, okay, rule number one, shake your store-bought eggnogs. Wow. That's a huge improvement over this. This, man, this is just, I mean, it's the same drink, wildly different. This is so much more crisp, so much more bright, so much more drinkable, so much more flavorful. We don't have a lot to compare to other than my own. None of these are gonna be that good. But I gotta say that Pennsylvania Dutch one, that's not too bad. There's nothing wrong with that. It might be a little one-dimensional. Like, I would like there to be some more evolution in there. All right, well, let's move right along to the Mr. Boston eggnog. You know, I'm a big fan of Mr. Boston. I'm not usually. Ugh. Man, none of these smell good in the bottle. That's terrible. Ooh, glug, glug. I'm gonna throw a little ice in it because, you know, they do seem to benefit a lot from that, so. Oh, it does say chill and shake well. I mean, I think they mean the bottle, but maybe they don't. Having a snifter of eggnog? <laughs> see how the third here. Yeah. And it's holiday Christmas party. Okay. There's like, okay. They've injected some kind of an artificial egg nut, nutmeg flavor in there. They put some nutmeg flavor in there that I don't like. It's not like poisonous. It's not awful. I know that's not a brilliant tasting note. I'm having a hard time picking apart these. I mean, to be frank, they don't taste all that, all that different. It's a subtle difference. I guess between the two, I just got to make a choice. I'm going to go Pennsylvania Dutch so far is the best of the bottled boozy eggnogs. Let's move right along to the New England classic. The one that I'm the most excited by just because of the number of things it says on it. It says it's made with Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Straight bourbon whiskey is a legal term of art. Off the top of my head, I don't know exactly what it means. I think it means it has to be aged two years and various things. It's got rum, it's got brandy and blended whiskey. So there's a bunch of things going on there. It's only 30 proof, it's 15% alcohol. Oh wow, that's interesting. Just quickly, shake well and serve chilled. To reduce the alcoholic content and retain the delightful flavor, simply use one part fresh milk with two parts eggnog. So just dilute it a little. Um, no. I got relatives to get along with this holiday season. You want to take my alcohol? Pour a little in a shake, eh? Glug, glug. I can't help myself. I always got to say glug, glug whenever I pour this stuff. I don't know why. Uh, this little glassy dude. Sure, I'll use this glass. It's a good glass for eggnog. Old New England. Here we go. Tastes like um, really boozy vanilla ice cream. There's a lot of vanilla notes in that. Two vanilla. Two vanilla. It just tastes like vanilla. It's vanilla plus nothing. It really just tastes like vanilla, but not like sweetened enough to be like vanilla ice cream. It just tastes like kind of dry vanilla. I'm not pleased with this one. This one displeases me. This is a bad eggnog. All right, well, let's move on to the last of the boozy eggnogs. I don't really know if this is eggnog. This is called Tiki Holiday Spirit. I got a Tiki Holiday Spirit. In fact, I'm gonna have a Tiki Holiday this year, but um, ow, oh, ow. Huge marks off, cork review. The little pull tab got under my fingernail and it cut me. Ow! 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 I have video evidence. I am sue. I'm not gonna sue. Yeah, no, sorry. A freak accident there. I'm not gonna blame you, but I'm kinda gonna blame you. I, I don't know if I... I think I'm bleeding. I stunk. Bottom still by Cutwater Spirits of San Diego. Rum with cream, allspice, cinnamon, natural pineapple, and coconut flavors and caramel coloring. Why did you add caramel coloring to this? Guys, I don't think you used enough. It's white. San Diego's weather can have you forgetting it's the holiday season, but our Tiki Holiday Spirit will take you there. It begins with our exceptionally smooth Bali High Rum with the subtle flavors of pineapple and coconut, which we combine with cream, cinnamon, and a hint of holiday spirit. The result is reminiscent of an eggnog, but with a cutwater tropical twist. Just pour and add ice and enjoy. I wonder if this will wind up being a little bit like Coquito, a kind of a coconut-based eggnog. I did an episode on that last year. 
I really, I found out by the way that I really like Coquito. It says pour and add ice. I'm gonna give it a shake because I think everything is benefiting from the shaking. That old New England did not respond to shaking very well. It didn't like froth up. This one did, it, it really poofed up. Look at that, look at that volume that we got out of there. I mean, that was like, it was kind of glorious. Yeah, pineapple for sure, you get strong pineapple. I don't know about this one. It's not like a curse. It's not toe curling bad. It just tastes like suntan lotion. That's what it is. It tastes like the smell of banana boat tanning oil, like a lot. And it tastes like bananas. It is, shakes well. It does light and like get light and frothy in a really pleasant way. The texture is actually quite nice. Eey. This isn't that good. This is not good. It's bad. It's not awful. It's not like you're, you know, it's gonna, your eyes are gonna turn green and your toes are gonna curl up or anything like that. It's not gonna stop your heart bad. It's just like, ugh, why'd you make that, huh? Why'd you do that? As I go in for another sip. Now that I'm good and lubricated, let's move on to the non-alcoholic store-bought eggnogs right after this. So I'm back. We're gonna look at the non-alcoholic eggnogs now. Now I'm not gonna shake any of these. I think that honestly, the likelihood of a person taking the time to shake a store-bought non-alcoholic eggnog is nil. You know, you kinda gotta reach and find those alcoholic eggnogs at the holiday season. Maybe that person's more likely to shake them and they will benefit from it. I bet these would benefit from shaking too. The reality is, is that it takes a lot of time for me to shake all of these when we add it all up. So we're not gonna do it. So first off, we've got Hood. Now I gotta tell you, I don't know if this is like new in my area or not, but I've never heard of Hood eggnog. I've just never seen it before. Let's go. Why is it in a Glen Cairn? Because I have a bunch of these. It's not rocket science, guys. They don't need to, you don't need to drink your eggnog out of a Glen Cairn. It's just a glass. It's not a magic whiskey tasting vessel. That's pretty good. That tastes like good store-bought eggnog. It doesn't taste like my eggnog, but as far as store-bought eggnog goes, that's pretty darn good. It definitely hits all the notes. There's like a rice milk. There's a rice kind of flavor profile that comes out of that. That's actually weird. And welcome. It kind of reminds me of um, horchata. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of horchata. I did have a thought, what's it gonna be like with a little drop, a little, 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 something, little something for daddy? Yeah, have a little something for daddy in there, a little something. There you go, a little, little something for daddy in there. Mm. Ooh, yeah, now we're on to something, that's pretty good. Oh my God, that's really good. Get, put, put your good whiskey in your cheap eggnog and go to Christmas town. All right, we're moving along, we're going to Chobani. Chobani, Chobani. I'm from New Jersey. I, I look at that. Uh, I'm from specifically the Jersey Shore. So when I look at that, it's like, I want to pronounce that Chobani. This is Chobani Oat Eggnog. Oat Nog. Not even eggnog. It's just Oat Nog. That does not sound promising. I got to tell you, you can take the egg off of your nog. I mean, it even says it right here. Hey, it's Oat Nog flavored. It says Oat Nog flavored right there. It doesn't say eggnog flavored. It says Oat Nog flavored. What in the shit is your cap is garbage? Chobani! It's gonna take a lot to win me over now. Okay, here we go. Chobani eggnog. That's not good. That does nothing like an eggnog. I mean, I guess it might be like an oatnog, but you fucking invented oatnog. And this is giving it more credit than it deserves. It tastes a little bit like the leftover milk after you have cinnamon toast crunch, but then you cut it with water by about half. So it's just like, mm, it's pretty weak. It Oh, there's a note that shows up very late of um, toasted marshmallows, which is not unpleasant. It's more of an olfactory note. It doesn't really show up in your mouth. There's no texture with it. It's like a ghost note. On the grounds that you splashed me with a faulty cap, could have been user error. We're not gonna take credit for that one. No, I, I have disbarred this oat nog. This is banned oat nog. Almond breeze, almond milk nog. It's getting sad over here. I mean, almond milk nog, oat nog, oat nog. Not oat milk nog, just oat nog. Does not inspire the same confidence that almond milk nog does, but I can't explain why that is true. A little darker color, very thick. It had like a very glue paste-like consistency when it came out of there. No, no. No, no, man. Not even close. That tastes nothing like a nog of any kind. That tastes like some kind of dissolved cardboard or something. I don't know, that's not good. That is not good. It's not, eh. Tastes like cereal box. That's what that tastes like. Oh my God. No way, man. Almond Joy, fuck that shit. Okay, this is Southern Comfort Vanilla Spice Eggnog, non-alcoholic. I think Southern Comfort makes an alcoholic one. We just didn't see it when we were out making the run to pick this stuff up. But this is the Vanilla Spice Eggnog. It's not the standard offering. Here we go. My body is not happy. 
more spice than vanilla. Very loud and artificial flavor, but not like, well, you may have noticed I don't like it. Um, it has like this fake vanilla cinnamon flavor thing that happens in there and then kind of, what was that weird, some weird notes at the end, man. This weird vegetal? No. Yeah, no, what is that? What the heck is that? I don't know what that note is. I do know one thing. I hate it. I don't like that. I'm sorry. That one, somebody likes it. I'm serious. And you know, one thing too is like very few people are gonna stand up here and buy every eggnog in the tri-state area and taste test them against each other, okay? You're gonna buy one and be like, okay, that's the eggnog we got. Oh boy, talk about things I have no expectations for. Califia Farms Holiday Nog Almond Milk. I don't even think this is trying to be an eggnog. I think this is, no, it is Holiday Nog, okay. I thought it was maybe like Nog, like almond milk with a hint of Nog flavoring. But no, I think this is their Nog offering for the holiday season. It's got this kind of like Maynard looking lady on the cover there with black soulless abyssal eyes. I don't know, that kind of freaks me out. I'm a little bit worried I'm gonna drink this and like, you know, lose my mind and tear my own flesh off. <laughs> How dare you call that a nog? That is so thin, I'm telling you right now. That is a thing of almond milk with like three drops of orange blossom water in it. That's all that is. There's nothing about that that tastes even remotely nog-like. We're moving on. This is trash. I don't want to see it again. Silk nog. Oh man, we gotta do the silk nog here. Okay. Oh God, that looks thin. There's a recipe here for nog creme brulee and it's upsetting me. Okay. Same idea. Almond milk with orange blossom water. Worse. Wow. Wow. Just like really artificial orange flavors jammed up into a thin kind of almond milk. Not into it. No. Bad stuff. Gonna drink some water. Here we go. Water drinking. Oh, shit, my fucking tooth. All right, next nog. We got semicircle brand eggnog. I don't know what it is. What is that? It just says trademark. What the hell brand is that? Some kind of a grocery store stop and shop? Maybe that's stop and shop, yeah. We shake and we pour it. Well, it's got a different color, first off. It's a nice yellowy color, it's thick. I mean, this is like nog. What? Kind of a cheesy smell. Very vanilla, not bad. Honestly, so far, these two like grocery store brands probably are so far the best of the store-bought eggnogs, the Hood and the Stop and Shop brand. That's not bad. I mean, it's competition is terrible. It doesn't come anywhere close to a proper eggnog. I think honestly, all of the boozy eggnogs are better, but boy, is that head and shoulders above some of these other nogs. A lot of vanilla, thick, not overly thick, but thick. You know, if you shook that, it'd be really nice too. Christmassy spices, yeah, it's not bad, that's not bad. I recognize the world needs lactose-free eggnog. That lactate is something people need. Although, terrible though they were, are there no almond milk eggnogs? As you may have noticed, I don't have particularly warm expectations for the lactate eggnog. Enjoy eggnog again. Bold promise, lactate. Let's see. Bold. We will try. Real eggnog. No discomfort. I have a funny feeling this is gonna cause me tremendous amounts of discomfort. Eh, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, you remember like the milk jug milkshake? Maybe you remember those, those little plastic cartons you shook it up and had like a little milkshake in it? And I got them at the, the after school program that I was in. Yeah, it reminds me of that. It reminds me of the milk jug. Milk jug milkshake, that like uh, schoolyard thing. Honestly, it's a lot better than any of the almond milk ones, I think, really. That was lactose intolerant. I'm definitely going for that over oat, oat nog or whatever the hell Khalifa or silk nog is. Jesus. Farmland fresh dairies, ultra pasteurized premium eggnog. No hormones added, no antibiotics. Here we goes. That's okay. That's fine. That's an okay eggnog. That tastes like eggnog. That tastes like the grocery store eggnog of my youth. It's not trying to be anything special. Yeah, no, the farmland is fine. Okay, nobody cares about it. Their grocery store brand is probably the good eggnog for you. Really, honestly, unless I got hood. Hood. This is the regular Southern Comfort eggnog. You'll find this in a lot of places, I think. I don't think it's gonna be very good. 
Okay, here we go. Southern Comfort Soca and Lime. This is disgusting. Southern Comfort Traditional Eggnog Ultra Pasteurized. Oh, so they've packed some like nutmeg flavors into that. That's what you smell in the nose. It's okay. It's not bad. I mean, it's like, I honestly, I think that your grocery store versions are better. And I'm gonna tell you why, because they don't have like nutmeg flavors added. They kind of assume that you've got a little thing of McCormick nutmeg in the spice rack from 1978 that you're just gonna sprinkle on your eggnog because you can figure that out on your own. And that's probably better than the nutmeg flavoring thing that they've infused this with. But on the whole, it's not terrible. There are worse eggnogs on the shelf behind me. It's okay. I would prefer hood. All right, that's it. Goodbye. I want to end my episodes like that from now on. All right, I'm done. That's eggnog. That's all the nog that's fit to print. <laughs> Where did that joke come from? I don't know. I'm having a very cozy and warm holiday. I hope you are too. I'll be back soon with a new HTD. In the meantime, maybe you want to check out some of these other episodes of the show. I've been making it for really long time so it's quite a few of them or hit me up on my socials i'd love to hear from you and uh happy holidays to you and yours see you guys soon